Last time we talked about something called categorification. And it's kind of the reverse process of counting. So numbers go to sets, and sets go to categories. Functions become functors. The equations that uh, a gadget has to satisfy become natural isomorphisms. So for example, in a monoid, the multiplication has to be associative. But here we have something that isn't associative, but rather is associative up to a natural isomorphism. That is, there's a way of mapping between these that doesn't depend on the contracts x, y, or z. Um, and so that idea of categorification let us take this one idea of a monoid and lift it up from sets and functions to categories, functors, and natural transformations um, and describe a monoidal category. Now, just as there were monoid homomorphisms, that is a function between the sets of monoid elements, that preserved the monoid structure, there are monoidal functors. That is a functor between categories that preserves the monoidal structure. So what does preserve mean in this case? Well, in a, mon in a monoidal homomorphism, if I apply, um, if I apply the function first, remember with parity, uh, let's see if I can find parity up here. There we go. Right. So with parity, I would return an integer mod 2. And here, I would multiply first and then apply the function second. This other way, I would apply the function first and multiply second. And these two should be equal. We have this equalizer. Well, in a, mon in a monoidal category, um, we can't expect them to be equal anymore, but we can expect them to be naturally isomorphic. So a monoidal functor should be something uh, well, let's talk about a functor. Our functor is a function takes in a contract, returns a contract, and return x. So we get a functor in. Sorry, we get a, a contract in, we return a contract. So that makes it a functor. But what, did, what makes it a monoidal functor? Well, a monoidal functor should take as input, sorry, a monoidal functor should preserve the multiplication. So what does that mean? It means if I have well, it means I have a natural isomorphism from functor of prod n x, y, etc. to prod n functor x, functor, y, etc. So here, we're multiplying first, then applying the functor second. Here we're applying the functor first, and multiplying second. Um, but these two aren't equal, right? They're, they're equal in a monoid homomorphism. They are naturally isomorphic in 
a monoidal functor. So let's look at, at an example of a monoidal functor. This functor is called the points functor, or laziness. So what it does is take in a contract and return a function that expects no inputs and return something that passes the contract. Um, so we call this the points of C because when C is a set, the set of functions from the one element set into C is isomorphic to C itself. It picks out all the points of the set, all the elements of the set. Um, if C is something else, like a vector space, then this would only pick out the, the linear functions from the terminal object in vector spaces, which is zero um, into C. And so it would only pick out the zero vectors in that uh, vector space C. But here, for JavaScript purposes, what it means is delay the computation. So in JavaScript, um, arguments are computed eagerly. That is, if you have a function and you pass some arguments to it, the arguments are computed first and then the values are passed to the function. By using lazy, I can turn all of my values, all of my computations, into thunks, into these computations waiting to happen. And you have to invoke them to cause the computation to happen. So this thing here, k, I used it before in an earlier video, but let me write it out again here just to be thorough. k equals a function x return function return x. So you can see that given a value x, it returns this thunk that when you invoke it, you get x back. Okay, so this computation has already happened, but we can wrap it up and make it look like something that's waiting to happen. Lazy flatten says if I have something that has been wrapped in one of these thunks twice, well, I can invoke the outer one and get one that is wrapped only once. And this lift and flatten notation, we could call this unit instead if we wanted, um, immediately suggests we're doing something twice and getting something once. This is no times and getting something once. Yes, it's a monad. So we can turn these things into a monad. So this is a functor. This much is a functor. This much makes a monad. And this part together with that part make a monoidal functor. So this is this happens to be a monoidal monad. Um, but what does lazy phi do? Well remember we wanted to go from lazy, that's our functor, a prod n x, y, etc. to prod n lazy x lazy x lazy y y because we like you there we go etc so that's what this thing has to do in order to preserve the tensor product the multiplication of our monoidal category 
So if we have something that is a lazy product, that means it's something that we can invoke once and get a product. Oops, need one more program over here. There we go. And once we have a product of actual value, well, these are contracts, a product of contracts, then we can turn it into a product of lazy contracts by lifting each one of those. So, what do we do? First we invoke the lazy product, cause it to be computed, then we check that it's an array, that is, it ought to do the thing that we're expecting, then we map I don't remember if I introduced map clean or not in this series. It doesn't matter. Then we map lazy lift over the uh, array. And so it goes from prod n x, y, etc. to prod n lazy x, lazy y, etc. So then we can use this to delay computations and only make them when we need 